Well, welcome back to Loaded Landscapes. My name is Simon Plant, and today we're going to be looking at the radial filter from within Lightroom. So, uh, this is the picture I took back in 2008, I should imagine. Um, it's shot in Prague on a very cold, damp November dawn. And uh, we're going to use the radial filter from within Lightroom uh, today and show you some things you can do with it. And uh, we can perhaps even kind of improve this image a little bit more. So the radial filter is located in the develop module. It's the three or fifth one along, uh, this one here. And uh, what you do with it is simply move onto your screen. You'll get your, your mouse onto the screen. You'll get like a crosshair. You click and you drag. And it will give you a, a circle or an elliptical, uh, elliptical is that the right word? Uh, selection there, which is your, uh, your radial uh, selection. And with uh, this, you can obviously adjust exposure like so. You can adjust brightness, you can adjust the contrast, the saturation to make things more saturated or less saturated. And my favourites, you can increase, in, increase, sorry, spit it out, increase the clarity or reduce the clarity of the selection. Same with sharpness. You can also click on the colour box here and pick out a colour, which can help us add a little bit of a, a wash to the uh, selection uh, wherever you want to put it. Um, you can also uh, feather the selection so you can make it the transitions a little bit sharper or less sharp, a bit, bit more bl nicely blended. And you can invert it. Now the invert will mean that instead of uh, uh, adjusting uh, what's inside our selection, you can uh, use it to adjust what's outside of our selection. So it just it simply does what it says. It inverts it. So which that can be quite useful as well. Um, you can change the shape, as I said, by dragging these handles. You can spin it around, and you can also right-click and duplicate it, and then move that to another area, which is what we're going to be doing today. Or we can simply delete them by, on a Mac, uh, clicking the backspace. Uh, and I believe you can also right-click and delete it there, or reset it. Okay, so that was very quick. Very quickly again, selection, select the radial filter, click and drag to the shape you want and then you can adjust it like so with these sliders and also invert it and feather the transitions so that is very quickly it shows you the overview it's pretty simple so now I've shown you the overview let's go into this image I'm going to zoom in a little bit and I just want to add a little bit more of a glow to these lamps and maybe add a little bit more saturation don't particularly need it but it's a good example to show you Click on the uh, elliptical marquee tool. I'm going to do exactly what we did earlier. I'm going to draw a selection over the lamp, a little bit larger perhaps than I need. Uh, I don't really need to brighten these so much, but I thought I might add a little bit more colour. So we can click on the colour swatch down here, pick out a nice warm colour. Uh, it might be a bit saturated, so I can bring the saturation down by dragging the eyedropper and get a colour... I like uh, it's a bit too saturated really but it, it's good for illustration purposes we can also change the saturation by moving this saturation slider down here which takes some of the pain out of dragging that little icon around the screen so somewhere like that let's say is quite good what I like to use as well there's clarity and sharpness sliders here so you can add a bit of mid-tone contrast with the clarity and also sharpen up certain areas a bit more. I quite like using these in a negative fashion because it kind of adds a little bit more of a glow to the picture. You can see that happening now with the sharpness. I'm going right down to negative 100. Probably a bit too much, but it's just around 40. just adds a little bit more of a glow. Same with the clarity. You can use that as well just to kind of smooth things out. And that's looking quite nice, um, like so. So there's before there's after you can see that's just glowing a little bit um, I don't want to go through all that again so we can just literally right click duplicate and then drag that over to this other lamp here zoom in so we have a look and I may want to just adjust this one slightly so it's not an exact replica of what we've already got okay so there's our first adjustment uh, let's see if I can turn these on and off. So, uh, let's try that. There's before, there's after. You can see that's kicking in. Let me just zoom in a little bit. 
There's your four. There's that. So just add a little bit of a glow to those. That works out quite nice. A little bit too much uh, saturation for my liking, but as I said, just for illustration purposes. So what else can we do with it? Well, we could certainly um, try and darken certain areas. So let's draw another uh, 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 marquee, elliptical, a radial, I should say, um, over this side. And let's say that these buildings might be a little bit distracting, maybe a bit too bright. We can look at dragging down the brightness of these a little bit maybe the saturation um, the exposure too um, maybe take out the saturation a little bit as well and that will just help uh, our viewers eye not get dragged over to that side of the picture there's before there's that so you can make your own mind up about that one I think it does help a little bit. It is quite a, orange. This sort of orange warmth colour is quite a, quite a strong colour, and it can distract your eye a little bit. So I think knocking that back uh, a tiny bit uh, doesn't hurt at all. Uh, obviously, if you want to reselect a, uh, um, I'm having trouble with remembering this name, the elliptical marquee. If you want to select one, just click on one. You can re back and readjust it. So let's go back to this one again, um, and maybe we want to feather it a little bit more or maybe contract it a little bit more. I'm going to contract it a little bit more. I don't want it to creep too much into the sky area, like so. I'm going to bring the exposure back up a little bit. It's got a bit too muddy. So just brightness and saturation on that one has done the trick. So there's two things that we can do with the elliptical radial, if that's what you want to call it, or just to call it the radial filter, which is what it's called. Uh, but you draw these little elliptical shapes or circles, and you can make these adjustments. So for the final one, let's add another. So we click on it. We want to add uh, new again. And I'm going to draw a larger one this time around, say, around here. And then we can click and drag that to the center of the image. This time, I want to untick the invert mask. Okay, I want to feather it a little bit more, and I want to bring down the brightness, and you'll see the brightness is getting taken down to the outer edge of the image, not the center, and maybe I want to just cool it off a little bit and add a bit more of a bluish cast, like so. I'm going to bring down the saturation a little bit. I'm just really just playing around here, as you probably, as you probably have imagined already, gathered. So that looks pretty good. Let's just take uh, a before and after of that. There's your four, there's after. So it's just taking down the mood a little bit, but it's not done it in the center of this selection. That has remained the same. And in fact, what we could do now is again click on new. Try and actually, no, let's do it another way. Let's get rid of that. Let, let me show you what we did before I was telling you about. Let's uh, click on that pin. Okay, let's duplicate it, but with our new duplication, I want to click on the invert this time to uh, adjust the center of the image, and I want to just add a bit of warmth to there. Okay, let's bring that, that saturation a little bit. So exactly the same selection in the same spot, but we, we're working on the inner, inner edges of it now. Like so. So we've actually got two selections in that same area in the center here. One's affecting the outside, cooling the image down, and this one's affecting just the center here and just warming it up. So it's just kind of giving a nice color contrast to the picture. Okay, so here's four with no, uh, none of the um, radio filters visible, and here's the radio filters we've just added. Okay, so. There's the power of using the radio filters. They are quite um, quite useful and versatile. Um, not, you know, again, Lightroom is not as versatile in some areas as using light, uh, as Photoshop. But um, you are getting more control these days with some of the adjustment tools, like adjustment brushes, the radio filter, the gradients, etc. And uh, I do think the uh, the, the radiant filter um, has uh, really kind of uh, brought Lightroom on in the, in the way it's used and I certainly use Lightroom more and more now uh, if I'm not compositing or doing any sort of uh, advanced selections uh, then uh, the radio filter has made this possible for me to use Lightroom more and more. So one last look here's our before 
where we started from not too bad uh, an image and then here's our after so we just increase the the mood maybe removes a few distraction areas like the building over here and add a little bit more pop and uh, diffusion to these lights or from within Lightroom or using the radial filter finally got it right after 10 minutes there you go so i hope you've enjoyed this uh, video and i hope to catch you on the next one cheers for watching mm -hmm.